The Oncoming Storm by Whiskey Mike One The excitement flowed through me as I listened to the instructor welcoming us to our first day of flight school. I was only a little colt with dreams of flying high and soaring through the air faster than any pony has ever flown before. But until then, I had to pass. There were about 30 of us on that first day in a large group in the middle of the courtyard of the Cloudsdale Flight School. The cloud under my feet were hard and unforgiving, just like the structures that surrounded us. The building seemed enormous to a little colt, and they were a little daunting at first, but I knew that if I could fly up to the top of the school tower, I could do anything. All right, kids, find a partner, grunted the instructor. He blew it into his whistle that was tied around his neck on a well-worn piece of string. It seemed pointless, as we were only two feet away from him. With the sound of the whistle still ringing in my ears, I turned to find a partner. Just looking at friends who had already found a partner made me feel a little bit left out. As I began searching through the crowd of ponies, I'd been living in Trottenham since birth. My mother and father were Pegasi, just like me. But this was my first time away from home. I had no friends in Cloudsdale, and I was beginning to think I would never find any. Hey, whirlwind! I turned into the direction from which my name was being called out. Right at the back of the crowd I could see a pale blue hoof, waving frantically, trying to get my attention. I made my way through the crowd to find the pale blue pony with a rainbow mane and a tail. Hi, Dashy! Hey, well, what are you doing here? Uh, the same reason you're here? Duh. <laughs> Rainbow laughed and beckoned me to join her. It had been a few years since I'd last seen her, but we remained in contact. She hadn't changed a bit. We started talking about what had happened in both our lives since we last met. Rainbow was living in Cloudsdale, whilst I was moving to different towns and cities throughout Equestria. My dad has, move, has to move a lot with work, so I have no time to make new friends. The life of a son whose father is in charge of the snow in Equestria is not fun. But I do get to see many places and many new ponies. Our conversation was interrupted by the instructor's whistle. Fall in with your partner. It's time to see who can fly. I froze. But Dash nudged me to follow the crowd through the tall archway. As we both caught up with the rest of the group, <clears throat> the wind picked up. Gasping could be heard from the ponies out in front. Come on, let's go see, said Dash as she ran into the crowd. Not wanting to be by myself, I followed reluctantly, for I knew what was coming. My dad told me about what was coming next before I got on the griffin that brought all of the Pegasi living on earth to the Cloudsdale. The courtyard was just for show. The school was on the other side on a separate cloud, with a hundred foot distance between them. Right, you kids, this is the first test. Teamwork. You and your partner must make it to the other side to a secure place in the school. If you fall, you and your partner fail, and you have to come back next year. It won't be a next time, shouted a little voice behind me. Calm down, my little pony, said the instructor. I'll catch you, and so will the other instructors. Flying above the gap were other instructors. Our lives were in their hooves. So who's first? asked the main instructor. With that, all the ponies backed away, except Dash, who stood at the front, head held high. What's your name, little filly? Rainbow Dash. Quick as a flash, he took off and made for the other side. Wait! shouted the instructor. Dash stopped and turned to face the instructor. You forgot your partner. But I thought he was right behind me. The instructor looked down at me, his brown eyes beaming. Name? he asked. Whirlwind, I answered. Ah, you're mainstream son, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, get out there. This should be a trot in the park for you. I walked up to the edge of the cloud, looked at the school in the distance, and then at Rainbow Dash, who was halfway between me, myself and the school. She was waving at me to come and join her. I swallowed my nerves, closed my eyes, and jumped off the edge. The ground was now visible, hurtling towards me. I hadn't flown in years. When you live on Earth, you hardly use your wings. My wings were glued to my body, unable to spread. I could hear the sound of wings behind me. That would be the instructor coming to save me then, I thought to myself. Well, you do realise that you are falling, not flying, right? I looked to my left. It was Dash flying quite casually next to me, but with a look of disappointment. 
Come on, world, fly for Equestria's sake. I know you can do it. I've seen you do it. Not wanting to let Nash down, I nodded my head, closed my eyes, opened my wings. The acceleration took me by surprise. I swooped up, just missing the treetops of earth, and shot up towards the school, passing the five shocked instructors who were coming to my rescue. A small cloud was in my way, but that was not going to stop me. I shot through it, bringing most of it with me in my slipstream. I landed on the cloud, with the school on the l and looked over to the bewildered group of ponies. If their mouths could reach the floor, they would have at this point. Dash landed next to me. A massive cheer came from the ponies on the other side of the gap. Dash and I exchanged a glance, but she was more focused on my wings. Uh, Dash, she... My eyes are here. What's wrong? Your... Your wings? They're huge! I looked back. She was right. My wings were huge. Bigger than a filly's wings, but the same size as, a, size as an adult Pegasus' wings. All the instructors landed in front of us, their faces fixed on my wings. Congratulations, you two. You're in flight school, said one of the instructors. But... But my, my wings! Look! They're huge! We know. We can see them, <laughs> laughed the instructor. Aren't you shocked? piped up Dash. No, your, your father was exactly the same. What? Dashie and I said at the same time. Your father had adult wings when he was a colt. I should know because he was in my class. We all had the feeling that you would turn out like your dad. Let's just hope you can live up to his name. Months passed in that time. Dash and I became inseparable. We did everything together and we were the best in the class. We received a lot of awards for skill, teamwork, and perseverance. Every pony knew our names in the school. From the newest students to the headmistress, we were unstoppable. Rainbow Dash did outshine me at one stage, the time when she got her cutie mark. She was the first in the class. Typical Dash, always first. Finally, I had a new challenge. Get my cutie mark. Day by day, I practiced my flying skills, but still nothing. Maybe my skills was not flying. It could have been anything. The summer before the last year of flight school, I returned home to Trottenham. My parents were so happy to see me and so proud of my accomplishment. But I was still upset about not getting my cutie mark. To cheer me up, my dad took me to his workplace at the Cloudsdale Welf Weather Factory. Seeing how the weather was made was fantastic. Rain, sleet, snow, and of course, the rainbows. I thought to myself, I wonder if Dashie would like a this job. My dad took me to the Snowflake production facility. That is, he was now in charge of. It was nice to see my dad working, but it was quite dull. The factory was a no-fly zone because the slightest breeze would blow all the snowflakes away, setting the workers back months. <clears throat> when the lunch bell rang, I took my opportunity and took to the sky. Being inside a factory all day when you want to be flying is a nightmare. But my dad was passionate about his work. Work is essential, he used to tell me every day. That piece of advice will stay with me for life. I was flying above the factory, I failed to hear the back-to-work bell. The turbines used to suck the in the air for the wind generators kicked back into life, and I was trapped in a torrent of air being sucked into a huge turbine with razor-sharp fins. I fought against the current, but being only a colt I was too light, I was getting pulled closer and closer to the fins. With just my tail inside the mouth of the turbine, I changed direction from flying away from the current of air in, to flying into it. The wind pounded my face, but I was I kept going. If I was to stop or slow down, I'd be dead. I kept gathering momentum. I got faster and faster. And I was getting dizzy. Flying in circles for about five minutes is not good for your balance. I felt like giving in. But then I heard a crash and a bang. I looked around to see the factory getting further and further away from me. The turbine was a smouldering wreck. I'm in trouble, I thought to myself. The security from the factory came to recover the racked turbine that was now in bits. The damage was unbelievable. The air intake was smouldering. It looked like a peeled banana. The sharp fins were embedded into the wall of the factory. I did this? How? I asked myself. News crews were everywhere taking photos of the wreckage and interviewing staff. I was taken to the office complex, to the weather factory where my dad was waiting for me in the main lobby. 
with the director of the weather factory and the headmistress of my school. I hung my head in shame. But all my dad could do when the guards let me go was hug me. Oh, son, I'm so glad you're alive. You've never hugged me like this before. My hug was interrupted by the director clearing his throat. <coughs> Mainstream, we've got some less questions to ask your son. My dad loosened his grip on me. What should I tell them, Dad? The, the truth. When the questioning was over, the director opened the door to let me and my dad out. Greeting me was my mum sitting nervously in the lobby, which felt more like an imperial Colise coliseum than a room, with chairs and old magazines on the cloud table. I walked over to her. The sound of my hoof clopping on the hard floor echoed. And when I reached her, my mum leaned forward in the chair to hear what I had to say. Well, said my mother, trying to hold back the worry in her voice, and mumbled a response. What was that, son? Again, I mumbled the same words. He's just too upset to tell you out loud. Come on, tell your mother, whirlwind, said my dad with a hoof on my shoulder. I leaned my head forward and whispered into my mum's ear. I've got my cutie mark. <laughs>